of a Helsinki <laughs> summit between President Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin was a highly anticipated event, but no one could have anticipated what would occur when the two took questions from the press. And President Trump sided with Russia over his own intelligence agencies. It was the Associated Press's John Lemire who asked about Russian meddling in the 2016 election and whether Trump believed his own intelligence officials or Vladimir Putin. Who do you believe? After spinning into a diatribe about servers and Hillary Clinton emails, Trump said this. President Putin, uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this, I don't see any reason why it would be. The blowback was fast and furious. You have been watching perhaps one of the most disgraceful performances by an American president uh, at a summit in front of a Russian leader. We saw President Trump by his side taking Vladimir Putin's side. For Putin, this was not just a good meeting, this was a moment. Even then, normally Trump-friendly Fox had naysayers. What worries me about you, Mr. President, is you seem to say only good things about your enemies, our enemies, and the hell with your friends. Virtually every mainstream media outlet forcefully refuted what the president said, even after Trump's backpedaling. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't or why it wouldn't be Russia. There was no going back for the press. The New York Times wrote, the shifting narrative underscores the degree to which Mr. Trump regularly picks and chooses intelligence to suit his political purposes. The Washington Post Margaret Sullivan summed up the media's approach to this incident best. For the reality-based press, the job will require clarity and moral force in ways we're not always all that comfortable with. In other words, call a spade a spade. By the way, that reporter who asked the question, Jonathan uh, Lemire from the AP, he was the one that President Trump called out at one of his press conferences, called him a sleazebag. Mm -hmm. That was the same guy. But uh, I, I fully support it, and I was watching when this came down, all of the analysis, the forceful language. It, it was exactly as characterized. It was, it was reprehensible. And, I mean, every single mainstream uh, correspondent who analyzed it that way called it for what it was, and good. I thought it was interesting how some people you don't normally hear from also came out on social media to talk about it. Um, the U.S. ambassador to Russia, John Huxman, his daughter oh, yeah. is a Fox News host and anchor, and she said it's horrible when the U.S. president throws the U.S. under a bus. Um, I do wish that the media had given a little more time to Putin's remarks. At one point, he was asked, um, why should we believe you? And he basically said, well, you shouldn't trust anyone. Why do you, th keep, why do you think that I trust Trump? Why do you think mm. Trump trusts me? And I thought that was an interesting thing that maybe <laughs> should have been explored yeah. by the media. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to sound really old-fashioned here, but I, I think that I was troubled by the indulgence in pure opinion by people who that is not part of the job description. Uh, you see some of the media roundups of what various people in the press said about uh, President Trump. And, you know, they jumble them all together. So it's like Anderson Cooper called it a uh, disgrace. Uh, I was kind of troubled by that. But he's not a pure journalist. He's an opinion reporter. Well, I guess he is. I mean, well, I is. think of him as being a reasonably neutral anchor. Uh, and then they would throw him in with James Fallows of The Atlantic, who is an analyst. And he's, he's perfectly okay for him to... Uh, to express his opinion in, in, in the strongest terms that he wants. I, I just was a little bit troubled by that. The other thing that bothered me about a lot of this was the really loose use of the word treason. Uh, personally, I think what happened this week was terrible. I think that the president's behavior was reprehensible. But by no definition was this treason. And people are throwing it around as if it means something. I heard and you it really that doesn't. in the green room. Can you just explain that a little bit? Why not treason? Well, first of all, Russia, at least technically, is not even an enemy of the United States. Right. And in addition to that, even if they were, is uh, President Trump literally selling out American interests to the Russians? He's saying some terrible things that sounds like he's heading in that direction. Uh, but Trump running his mouth is not the same as action. Wait, but isn't just to push back on that a tiny bit, and, and I don't know the answer here, but uh, so I'm thinking out loud with you. If the U.S. intelligence community has concluded, as it has, that uh, Russia attempted to and succeeded in interfering with the U.S. elections in 2016, 
And if the president stands next to the head of state from Russia and says, you know, I don't really believe that. I mean, he, you know, he told he me that, he that it wasn't them, and I don't see why it would be. Isn't that, doesn't that rise to the level of giving aid and comfort to an enemy who has just conducted this sort the of The problem attack. is that legally Russia is not our enemy. North Korea may be because the Korean War was never officially declared over, but Russia does not, I mean, the relationship between the U.S. and yeah. Russia doesn't meet the very strict and narrow yeah. legal definition for an enemy of the state. The, oh, Rosen, the Rosenbergs were not convicted of treason. They were convicted of conspiracy to commit espionage. I think I am, like you, Dan, a little old-fashioned in uh, feeling a, a little bit... Uh, I, I don't know, disturbed by the fact that I think it's okay <laughs> that journalists were speaking against what the president had done, um, because that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed that to cover the stories, the right? Right. But that's the problem. That's how it was a few years but that's ago. That's what Margaret Sullivan never, is talking about. It, that, that, right. It's over for them. No, I understand that. So we have been forced now to yes. be to do this because you're to ignore it, doing it, to ignore it, do. then you're not yeah. doing your right. job, right? Exactly. Because everyone around you is saying, wait. Wait a minute. But there's this big elephant in the room yeah. that you are not addressing. So journalists, no matter how entrenched you are in traditional journalism and saying you should just cover the story, everyone is being forced right. to to have this strong language, this editorial thing. And and I think what this is doing, it's making it easier now, the next time something like this comes up, mm -hmm. to where it's I don't know that we're gonna have that line. Right. right? Yeah. And all you I, I think all you need to do, I understand why you're troubled about terms like reprehensible or disgraceful. All you need to do is say something like Totally unprecedented, surreal, confounding. I think all right. of those things yes. are. How about not yes. true? Accurate. Well, yes. yeah, or something have is, a quote is said from an so analyst true. saying yeah. it. Right. Also, I think it's worth pointing out really quickly Fox News, uh, there were some people who were surprised, spoke mm -hmm. negatively about this. As a system, Fox seems to have found its new equilibrium. I saw uh, them, I think it was uh, the five earlier today, maybe Fox and Friends talking about the MSM and Democrats freaking out about what happened in Helsinki. So they're I, back on right. this. I think Adam put it well. I'm not talking about. Uh, engaging in some sort of false objectivity here. I'm just talking about a little bit more restraint. You're old-fashioned. Yeah. All right. <laughs>